In the next part of my journey through Peru, I'm heading up higher than I've ever been before into the Peruvian Andes. The Andes reach for thousands of miles, stretching all the way down to Chile. But it's up here, high in the clouds, that hides one of the greatest cities in the world, where nobody lives, Machu Picchu. My starting point for this part of my quest is the town of Cusco, where most folk come to acclimatize on the way to Machu Picchu, and I can feel why. The thing is, you're so far above sea level here that you have to almost think about breathing. As I feel like I've had nine pints of lager. In the Andes, the locals have a way of dealing with altitude sickness. These are coca leaves. Now the locals chew these, but they also make a tea out of them, which are here. Like this, you see. Now this is quite normal and legal here. However, if I was in the UK, this would be completely illegal. So I'm not going to try it. You see, cocoa leaves are the raw material used in cocaine and elsewhere in the world. This could get you jail time. Cusco is steeped in history and their food is the same. Lots of flavours and influences from the Inca generations 500 years ago. And there's no better way to get your teeth into the cuisine than to eat where the locals do. This guy's a local speciality. He doesn't look too worried about it, does he? Eating guinea pig is a delicacy here and has been for 500 years. But I'm trying something different on the menu. Now this is a local Peruvian dish, it's called chicharron. And what it is, is four big chunks of pork. Oh, that's one of them. They're actually cooked in their own fat. Potatoes and the biggest sweet corn you've ever seen in your life. And it comes with an onion salad. And that is a normal portion. Next day, and there's no time to sleep off my altitude sickness, as I'm off to the Sacred Valley, the next stop on our journey into the mountains. Deep in these hills lies the salt mines of Maras, farmed by locals since Inca times. My guide Freddy is taking me to meet Francisco and his family, who have been extracting salt from this small plot for generations. I'm not being funny, but I'm struggling to breathe here. Oh. You know, so we'll go over how far up, high up here? This is almost 10,000 feet. 10,000 feet, and they're working. They're working no problem. On this with this thin air and stuff. Do they make a lot of money from the salt? Unfortunately, not that good money. So they make like 50 soles a day, which is which not is a about, good money. Which is about 12 pounds 50 a day. A day. The whole family ha has to work on this. While the locals are hard at work in the fields or salt mines, as a refreshment, they drink chicha, a traditional corn-based juice. And local lady Rosa is going to show me Hello. how to make it. Rosa explains that they dry out the corn and then soak it in water. So it, it's, it ferments. Ah, I see. Then they leave them in the sun. And then you take them over here and then you, and you grind them up. Ah. After boiling, it ferments for up to four days before it's finally ready for tasting. Thank you very much. It's actually very refreshing. Meanwhile, Rosa's friend Felicia has been cooking me some lunch. <laughs> Hello. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. This is my new lady cook. Isn't she fantastic? <laughs> this is um, almost like a vegetable soup with corn. And uh, they grind the corn up. The corn is a thickening agent. Sometimes they have a quinoa in as well. And a bit of chopped herb to go on top. It's a very simple soup. But it's meant to be delicious and nutritious. So, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Super. Gracias. Wow, it's good. It's, it's delicious. Very thick. It's one of those soups that you think it's doing you some good. So, yeah, good stuff. So fed and watered, it's time to begin the final ascent to the place I started my journey eight days ago for. From here on in, there's no more roads.
three hours later, and I finally arrived at my destination. And what can I say? It's definitely been worth it. You know, it's not often I'm speechless, but just look at that. Only when you're actually here do you get a real idea of how incredible this place is. This is where 1,000 Incas would have lived for almost 200 years before the Spanish invaded and they fled into the jungle. This city then lay undiscovered for hundreds of years until the early 20th century, when an American explorer found it with the help of a local farmer. It's now unsurprisingly classified as one of the wonders of the world. What a breathtaking place. I could literally sit here all day, but there's a stove with my name on it waiting for me at the bottom of the mountains. What a fantastic view, look at that. Right, this is my twist on a Peruvian beef dish. First thing you'll need is potatoes some onions, garlic and some chilli, then fry them in a little oil. To add some moisture, I'm using chicha, the drink Rosa made earlier. I'm adding to that some sweet corn, local tomatoes and local chincho. So it's quite sweet, but it, it's a fantastic thing to cook with. And it'll give the whole dish a really nice sweet edge. I'm out of breath here. <laughs> I am actually. Even walking from there to there, <clears throat> I do get a bit of breath just. Because you know, it ain't easy cooking at 11,000 feet above sea level. After cooking the beef separately, you add it together with the stew base. Look at the colours there. So that, that's my Peruvian beef stew with herbs and the biggest sweet corn I've seen in my life. That was one of the toughest bits of cooking I've ever done in my life but it was well worth it, because what a fabulous country. My Peruvian adventure has come to an end, but I'll take home some incredible memories of the people and some of the most breathtaking sights in an amazing country.